MPI brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey. And this week it's Texas Instruments. Lady Ida, what is the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, this week we are back with a classic TI. They make such cool stuff. And we're going to be looking at their TMUX series of analog switches. Uh, they come in TSOP. They also come in QFN, but this is the, the icon they've got on the, on the DigiKey site. Um, so the TMUX 821 series is... A, SPST analog switches. Um, they are a fully solid state, uh, not the same as a relay or even a, a solid state relay. These are analog switches that are meant to pass analog signal back and forth, but they're much, much faster than relays. They don't have a mechanical um, situation. They don't click and they don't get oxidation. Um, and uh, they're definitely a lot smaller and less expensive than solid state relays. Uh, you know, they you saw the package is just like a 16 or you know 18 TSOP goes on your board and it can switch bi-directionally signals that can go up to 100 volts, which is very high. This is a particularly high voltage um, analog switch, and then you can control the switch open or close with your know, logic levels way below 100 volts. It goes down to 1.8 volts. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Um, so you are familiar with your standard push button switches. You want to connect uh, analog signal back and forth. You can use a push button switch or a slide switch, a uh, toggle switch. Um, Digiki has tons of those. If you don't mind, you know, having a, a you know mechanical connection, uh, these work really great. You want to switch um, audio signals from, you know, uh, headphone to um, speaker, and you don't mind having a button or a switch. You know, go for it. We'll do the job quite well. Um, and there's like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of options as well. This is just the push button switches, but for toggles and slide switches, um, there's also a ton of options. But these are mechanical switches. And so somebody has to like mechanically press the button or flip a switch. Like I said, you can use a relay, uh, but relays are really, really big and they're loud and clicky uh, and they do fail after a while because they eventually oxidize. And so an analog switch is kind of like, a, a you know, a mysterious and mystical thing. It acts just like your everyday normal mechanical switch, except that the thing that connects or disconnects is a signal, a digital signal. Um, in this case, they are implemented by having two um, back-to-back NFET and PFETs. And, um, you know, by manufacturing this on your silicon and doing a good job with um, the isolation and the specifications, you can have it be a bi-directional switch. So signal can go back and forth between the two sides. So, which is interesting. Most people think of, you know, a FET switch, a PFET or NFET switch as sort of a, a unidirectional, you want to send, um, connect a source voltage to a uh, supply, sorry, a source voltage to a sinking, volt, um, sinking load. You can do that with a switch. But in this case, you actually have, you know, true analog bidirectional communication. And in this case, it even goes at a much, um, it can go at a fairly high voltage, 100 volts of common mode between the two. One nice thing about having analog switches is you don't get switch bounce. So like I mentioned, you know, relays are often used in such situations, but um, you have especially for telecom, but you will get chatter, you're going to get oxidation and they will fail eventually. Whereas what's nice about these analog switches is um, you don't have, you know, when, when they switch, they switch on pretty much instantaneously. So you can switch back and forth multiple times after worrying about oxidation or switch failure, but there are some downsides. So one downside is that when you're dealing with a mechanical switch, when it's closed versus open, it's basically either a short, like almost zero ohms, 0 0.001 ohms or so, and when it's open, it's infinite ohms. So there's like no connection between the two contacts. When you're dealing with a analog switch, there's always going to be some resistance. So when it's closed, it's not zero resistance or even 0 0.001. It's five ohms, which is like not a small amount. And in this case, it is also, yeah, I think it's like seven to 10 ohms. You can get very low RDS, uh, sorry, R on analog switches. This one is medium um you know i did compare this with the cd 4066 a common low cost analog switch 
and that was like 120 ohms so this isn't too bad five ohms or so and when it's open it's not truly truly open uh you do have some uh leakage between the two in this case it's 10 mega ohms for example you can find the specifications for the actual um on and off resistances are in the data sheet uh in this case the on resistance is yeah it's about you know five to ten ohms depending on the temperature um it is pretty consistent like you're not going to get a high variation with temperature which is kind of nice uh some switches make sure you check this check the spec sheet with temperature and voltage the you know the specified resistance on the front page of the data sheet may go up quite a bit and then uh, you can see the drain off leakage. So that's how much current will uh, leak between um, the A and B contacts. Another thing to watch out for with analog switches is you do have to, it seems obvious in you know hindsight, but if you have a mechanical switch, the voltage that you use to turn on off, say the relay, does not relate to the voltage that you're switching. You know, you can turn on and off the relay with three volts and then when you're um, uh, switching, sorry, you, this, the voltage you're using to turn on and off the relay can be like three to five volts. And the voltage it's switching can be up to like 220 volts AC. Uh, in this case, you do have to provide with these analog solid state uh, switches, a plus and minus voltage that covers the total voltage that you're planning to have on the A and B pins. So for example, you want to switch a voltage um and a voltage that can go as high as you know plus minus 12 volts um you'll have to provide vdd with 12 volts and vss with negative 12 volts so you'll have to cover that total voltage because you have to have your mosfets conduct so watch out for that don't assume like oh my logic level is 1.8 volts so i'm going to give it 1.8 volt for the vdd now it has to be as high as the highest voltage you're planning to put through the analog switch okay next up they are not isolated uh it seems kind of obvious but you know uh compared again to relays or switches where you have some uh physical space or plastic between you and the voltage that's not going to happen here it's all on one chip so you could get a separate digital isolator you know i just quickly looked up on ti.com and this came up um there's silicon and opto isolating um either will work just great but there are some nice things that are, uh, you know, like I wanted to give you the downsides of like, hey, watch out for these things. I have definitely been bit by some of them. But some of the good things are um, I like little details, like they have uh, the built in uh, pull down resistor. So they're automatically enabled or disabled by default. Uh, there's a nice fail safe um, so that if you apply voltage to the selection pins and for some reason the voltages aren't on the power pins, um, you won't blow up your chip. I have absolutely done that. So kind of nice to see that. There's also uh, design for latch up immunity, which is going to be very handy. You do not want your switches to latch. Um, like I said, the pull down resistors are built in and you can run them off of very low uh, logic. Sometimes the logic used to switch has to be similar to the voltages that are the highest and lowest uh, VDD and VSS. In this case, you can just use your normal microcontroller voltage, but you can also go up to 48 volts. So if you are using a microcontroller, if you're using some signal coming in from your product or project, uh, you might be able to use the working voltage if it's like 24 or 48 volts. Um, there's three variations, the 8211, 8212, 8213. Uh, the only difference, the pinouts are the same. The only difference is whether they're uh, normally connected, normally open, or alternating normally open and normally connected. Nope. In, in stock right now, all three versions. So, uh, and lots of them in stock too, which is kind of nice. Uh, sometimes I'm like, no, there's only two, uh, and they sell out. But uh, in this case, um, very handy, really useful, often for audio, video. Um, I don't know if this would be necessarily good for USB. You should check the whether the high speed rating would be uh, useful for it. But definitely AV switching, um, analog switches, or test equipment when you want to connect like different voltages around not good for switching big power supplies but i think you do about 200 milliamps and that's this week's on